So now we're going to move on um, to the commercial award, and that's going to be presented by Isabel Oswell, uh, Head of Business and Research Audiences at the British Library. Thanks very much, Mahendra. Yeah, my name's Isabel Oswell. I head up the um, business audiences at the British Library, and um, I was one of the people who founded the Business and IP Centre just over 10 years ago in the main library. Um, and uh, for those of you who haven't been in, um, it's about transforming our collections, both business and intellectual property, um, to help entrepreneurs to see where there's a market for their um, idea or their business, make sure they protect it, and to help them to exploit their ideas commercially. Um, and it also involves day-to-day uh, -day workshops, one-on-one -on -one advice, and mentoring, covering the whole spectrum of setting up and running a successful business. And our research shows that if you use the Business and IP Centre, you're more than four times likely to be successful. So um, that's why it gives me great pleasure to uh, be announcing today's commercial awards. Um, and these are for projects or for applications that have either have strong commercial potential or have demonstrated commercial potential. Um, and this is the first year that we've ever uh, launched these, this category for commercial awards. And um, I'm afraid we didn't have quite as many entries as we'd have liked, but we did have some very good entries. So those of you out there who have applications or know people who could use our collections to create uh, commercially viable products or applications, please do enter next year. So, the first person well, I'd like to talk about, or the application, is an application that is... Am I allowed to announce it? Yeah, we. <laughs> Sorry. And, and could you do a drum roll for me? Because I'm not quite as good as Alan. <laughs> anyway, the runner-up is a fantastic application. Um, it's called Poetic Places. Yay. And... Um, it's, at the moment, a free application, but it does have commercial potential. And um, it's been developed for both iOS and Android services. I have tried it on my British Library phone, and it's a lot slower than I would like. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it is a great application, um, and it launched in March uh, this year. It was created by Sarah Cole of Time Image, and uh, she was also our creative entrepreneur in residence, um, at the library, uh, which was funded by Creative Works London. And Poetic Places brings poetic depictions of places into the everyday world, helping people to encounter poems in the locations described in the verses. And at the moment, I think um, it only applies, or well, these, these locations apply to London, but are going to spread geographically. Um, these are also accompanied by contextual historical, historical narratives and relevant audio-visual materials. And these materials are, are primarily drawn down from open archive collections, including the British Library Flickr collection. So, drumroll, Sarah, please come and collect your award. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. This is a, a, a really lovely surprise. So um, you've done a, a fairly good description of Poetic Places there. Free app uh, that I've developed for Android and iOS. Uh, it's been available since March. Um, we have had about 8,000 downloads, so that's gone quite well. Um, it's been a great experiment, Poetic Places. Um, I was funded by Creative Works London to be creative entrepreneur in residence here at the British Library and develop this project. Um, it's allowed us to experiment with a few things. Do I slide myself? Yes. Um, so just some screenshots for you. Uh, firstly, it's allowed us to do an experiment with uh, serendipitous discovery of materials. Uh, so if you leave the app running, it will notify you when you come to a place uh, where there is location-related content, for example, Euston. Um, and that allows you to uh, always access content that's relevant to you where you are now. So. That was good. Uh, secondly, it's a replicable project. Uh, there was no coding involved in this. So if you're 
quite good with computers, or even moderately good, uh, have a bit of spare time, about 500 pounds, you can make this yourself uh, with an app building platform that I found. Uh, look it up on the website to find out more. And uh, finally, it's been a, a real opportunity to experiment with open collections um, and, the, and collections in the, under both Creative Commons licenses and already in the public domain. Um, and being able to use different collections without having to negotiate lots of copyrights and permissions has, has been a fantastic asset to this project. Uh, so yeah, download it, give it a try, let me know what you think. If you want to get involved and provide some content, that would be great too. I'll stop. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah. And um, now, um, so a slightly larger um, organization um, uh, we've been working with over the last few years. Um, and uh, so I'm going to get to the drum roll P a bit again. Um, this is an organization that we have worked with in the past um, on our 19th century um, digitization of books. And the winner of this category is a company called Bibliolabs. And Bibliolabs has developed a product called Biblioboard, um, which is an e-content delivery platform and includes online curatorial and multimedia publishing tools to support it. And this, these tools make it very simple for subject area experts, so academics and curators, for example, to create multimedia exhibits for the web and online and, and mobile devices without the need for any technical expertise. And the curatorial output is available via a responsive website, and I did try it out and it's very responsive, as well as through native apps for mobile, devi mobile devices. And this unified interface incorporates viewers for PDF, EPUB, images, documents, video and audio files and allows users to access content without having to link out to other sites to view disparate media formats. So I think we have today Mitchell Davis, who's going to come and collect the award on behalf of Bibliolabs. So Mitchell, will you please come up and collect the award? So I'm very happy to be here as I watched that scissors and paste presentation. It uh, sort of made me feel like the more things change, the more they stay the same with the uh, comical uh, journalistic process going on in our country. Now, I'm sure you know nothing about it, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I, I want to thank BL Labs for recognizing the work that we've done. We've done some amazing groundbreaking projects with you guys, several of them, and it does feel very good. There's no more esteemed library in the world than the British Library, and so it feels very, very good to be recognized by you. Um, I want to thank Sam Tillett, too, who's worked alongside me for most of this journey here at the British Library. She's certainly been a force uh, behind making sure that these projects succeed, so thank you very much, Sam. Um, the first digital project that we did with these, and, I, and as we get into this, I, some of you guys may know the backstory on this, that in around 2007, Microsoft um, undertook a digitization project, and they pretty quickly stopped it, I think nine months or a year into it. Um, and they had digitized just over 60,000 books here from the 19th century collections when they decided to stop that program. And they very graciously gave those files back to all of the partners that had participated, including the British Library. And so it created a very unique situation because, as you guys know, most of the time when these collections are being digitized, they're digitized in commercial relationships that place restrictions on usage for time periods or, or for um, certain use cases. And this was a very large corpus of materials um, that you guys could do whatever you wanted to with. And, and luckily, we showed up about that same time. Uh, we did a project to put these books into print, which was very successful. And then when the iPad was launched in 2010, we, um, being an ambitious software company, decided we wanted to tackle a mobile app and partnered with you again to make those same 60,000 books available uh, via the iPad. 
Um, we had some moments at the beginning. I mean, there was obviously tons of work to be done on image processing. We had to process 60,000 books. Um, tons of work to be done on metadata cleanup. We did put editors in front of the, the MARC records to do um, editorial uh, work on those. And then about a month before we were supposed to launch, Apple actually called and heard we had been working on this and asked if we could launch it at the Worldwide Developers Conference. And so I remember being on a phone with the head of PR on a Sunday afternoon. It was, it was quite a scramble, but we got it done. Um, and it was an enormous success. We had um, over 250,000 downloads pretty quickly, downloads from almost every country around the world. We've had well over a million sessions um, with those materials since. So it was a, a real lesson for us in being able to take esoteric research materials and curate them around popular themes, bicycling, castles, uh, countries like Iceland. We did a big exhibit at the Frankfurt Book Fair on Iceland. And you could create new users of these materials, more sort of uh, folks out in the world and outside of the research libraries. And so it really inspired us getting into um, the digital library business. And so that led to us eventually launching BiblioBoard, which is our current digital platform. Um, if anybody has a phone, computer, iPad that's online, you can go to library.biblioboard.com. This page will come up. Um, if you just want to quickly go in and look at all of our open access content, you can click the button on the left. Um, if you want to see the British Library's content, you can type in uh, British Library, all lowercase, uh, together, and welcome one, and you can be let right into the collection. So um, our goal as a company is to create a library patron user experience that is equal to or better than the media experiences developed by consumer companies. And we think consumer companies are who are setting the bar on user experience now. Companies like Amazon, Google, Spotify, the companies that, that people sort of use in their everyday life. And we think that libraries should be able to deliver an equal or better user experience to that. And that was a wonderful description we had before I came up. So I don't need to reiterate exactly what BiblioBoard is. Um, I do think in the, in the interest of openness, um, about nine months ago, we did launch a public, a completely open version of BiblioBoard, which has about 50,000 pieces of content on it now and is growing. And this was an experiment for us in how to use BibFrame and schema.org uh, technologies to create web discoverability of library resources. Um, if any of you guys are working in that, it, it allows for MARC records and other library cataloging records to be indexed by Google and provide one click, well, where the, where the licensing is correct, provide one click access to content off of Google, which drives enormous amount of usage. Um, and it's been very, very successful. So we're really, really proud to be, to be working in that. We also have a lot of licensed content as well, but we're very committed to open content. We have a, another slide uh, that I, I thought I sent over um, that is about an OER project that I just wanted to mention while I was here too that we're doing with JISC um, and at the University of Liverpool, which is an open education resource project uh, for interactive textbooks that has just come out of its first round of pilot and was enormously well received by the students, which is really our focus. We want the students to be thrilled with the experience and we figure if we can get that right, everything else will sort of work backwards from there. So you guys keep your eyes open for that. That's probably the biggest new project we're working on here in the UK and expected to come out of pilot in the next year, year and a half. So thank you guys very, very much for this. I'm very, very appreciative and um, thank you.